Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Brayden, Tim, Second Legacy, and thank you for showing up. We have got something to talk about of great consequence, I'll have you know. AR bans in New Jersey. Yes, the Blue Curtain State of New Jersey have been ruled unconstitutional. Now, this is a really big thing. We're going to walk through the entire ins and outs because we have a win, we have a loss, we have a lot of stuff we're going to walk through. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on if you guys are enjoying the sarcasm and humor deployed at a premium. And now... Let's get it, Tim. ARs, yeah. New, New Jersey. Mm. Yeah, you hate to see it. I think uh, I think it was said by a Supreme Court justice they're in common use. That AOC backed that up. Oh, recently. That's right. Uh, so I think maybe yeah. the courts heard that, and um, yeah, they, they must have. <laughs> it's weird uh, because you know it turns out when Supreme Courts and dissents, like in a case like Cargill, say that ARs are common use and semi-automatic and the most most usual. And then AOC parents it. It turns out it does have weight to it. It's all on record. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But well, let's let's bring the people in if they have not heard this fantastic news, um, and then we'll break down why it is fantastic news because some people were still nay- naysaying on this. Were they really? So, oh, they There's were. So much I'll get positivity to it in a on I'll, the internet. Oh, the internet. So it's, it's, it's good for it. Well, this uh, this is the case right here. I've got number one pulled up slides. This is uh, Cheeseman versus Plackin. FPC is involved. That's the case. Not hugely important. You guys remember that. But I'm going to start off with just a conclusion, Tim, and then I'll walk through some of the things that this judge said as we have this discussion around this profound announcement. So this is number two slides. The AR-15 provision of the assault firearms law is an unconstitutional under Bruin and Heller as to the Colt AR-15 for use of self-defense within the home. Now, we're going to come back to that because they said brand specific, which I thought was interesting. And then the other part here, and it's finding the large capacity magazine amendment does not. It remains valid since Bruin did not disrupt this holding. So, Tim, this is where it gets really interesting. AR-15 bans, unconstitutional. Large capacity magazine restrictions, constitutional. Isn't that, isn't that an interesting bedfellows kind of in the that same is ruling? weird. It's funny. The LCM does not remain the huh. Yeah. It's, so the, the large capacity magazine ban that they call it in New Jersey still stands. That but is But the AR-15 uh, ban, that's unconstitutional. Do you know the reason why he said it was? Well, no. I'm not uh, clairvoyant. Because, I work on that. I'm, I'm trying, but oh, it's not working oh, yet. You are pretty good, though. Your two crystal balls are pretty accurate. Yeah. I um, love my crystal balls. <clears throat> uh, who doesn't? So... <laughs> <laughs> well that was a quick divergence so, uh, from uh yeah anyway let's uh, was, yeah let's get back okay. let's get back to the colt so, ar-15 the colt ar-15 right mm. so basically what he said was because there's a ban on an ar-15 that is unconstitutional because it's not a restriction if it had just been a restriction it'd be fine but it was a ban so it wasn't so the large capacity magazines that's not a ban which would be unconstitutional, but because it's a restriction just to a lower capacity, you're fine. That's the paraphrase so basically he's of just what saying, he saying magazines are legal. Uh, if but you can put a, a, a limit on the number of rounds they can hold, so a one round magazine exactly right. would be constitutional under Bruin because you know as long as the firearm can feed one round from its magazine, it's still functioning. And uh, yeah, right. it seems that's, like that's a really really exactly right. yeah that's that's uh, wow that seems totally reasonable. Not, <laughs> I mean. If there's a standard capacity, then 30 mm-hmm. would be it, right? 20 or 30. Right. Certainly not 10. 10 was never a standard capacity for an AR-15 ever manufactured. No, 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 not at all. So that seems like that, uh, that's, that's a little lunatic-ish. But what, what's up with the Colt AR-15? Colt must be jumping up and down rejoicing right now because right. <laughs> their rifles are protected New and nobody Jersey else's is. Just opened up. <laughs> the New Jersey market just ru- – a golden road just opened up and a gate went, Aww. We're back in business, fellas. Um, <laughs> 40 years of bad decisions. <laughs> done. <laughs> done. All right. So here's, here's why. And that's a good pickup because it says specifically brands – I mean, like they say Colt AR-15 now. Does that actually mean all AR-15s? I mean, I, it's the same thing. Like, it's a standard generic mil- military standard. So it's like, well, it's the same dang thing. Is it brand specific? I, I, I think you're going to find out that it's not. But anyway, okay. um, let's just operate under the idea that it is cold, right? The reason why he said in this ruling, it's, I mean, it's like a 90-page brief, and I'm not going to go through all of it. But he basically said... Well, people told me about the Kate Colt AR-15, and now I understand it. But the other ones, I just don't. So I'm not going to say anything about them. <laughs> so he's a gun guy. Yeah. So he's definitely a gun guy. Yeah, he's definitely. He comes from the Davy Hogg school of gun people. Yeah. 
<laughs> Hello, my fellow bros. Yes, exactly. Hello, fellow gun people. Turn your guns in. Hello, fellow gun people. I love guns too. It's so amazing. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, so that's that's the overall brief summation. But I want to bring through a few of the uh, the quotes from it, which kind of show you the idea behind it and why we are winning. Because this this is the big piece. The site the um, the decisions that he cited in here. You're going to hear a bunch of them. You're going to hear Bruin. You're going to hear Heller. You're going to hear Cargill. All three of these are going to come to fruition. Now, this is an interesting piece here. So this is number three. And hat tip to the reload, by the way. Um, At least it's not the trace. Together a, <laughs> this is not the trace. This is the reload. The opposite. So this is from Stephen Gutowski. <clears throat> I believe is, um, his, I don't want to get his name wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Stephen Gutowski. But he put together a brief summation rather quickly, and he pulled out a few of these pieces. So hat tip to him, but I want to show you what he said. This is uh, number three. The Garden State's ban on AR-15 rifles is unconstitutional. That's the finding that District Court Judge Peter Sheridan handed down on Tuesday. He ruled the state's ban on popular rifles is incompatible with the Second Amendment under the Supreme Court's most recent precedents. However, he found the opposite was true with the state's ban on LCMs. We talked about that. The ruling comes in a case that the Supreme Court remanded for rehearing in 2022 after handing down the Bruin decision, which established history and tradition test based tests for gun laws. It is also, for, also the first federal case of an AR-15 ban to be handed down since last month's U.S. v. Rahimi. By the way, how crazy. That was only a month ago. Rahimi. Isn't that nuts? Only of like all the stuff that's gone on. So fast how all this ago. is moving. I know. Crazy. Right. It's insane. Um, and then the, the last piece of that little segment is the outcome could spell trouble, not just for New Jersey's assault weapons ban, but the dozen or so others throughout the country as court cases against them move forward. So, so now I understand all this. What do you want? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so, so this is a case that was handed back down from the SCOTUS mm-hmm. to the lower court saying, hey, fix yourself and cited, mm-hmm. you know, Bruin and, and others. So uh, this judge probably was in support of the ban on AR-15s, but he got his hand mm-hmm. slapped by SCOTUS, and therefore he's going to do a thumb in the eye with the magazine thing that makes zero sense. Maybe. It's totally, it is totally possible that he was doing that. But in this brief, he actually does say, while I don't like it and the Supreme Court's decision stands, I do have to follow it. And he actually says that in the brief. So I'm right. Right? Oh, you had to go there. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that was a fancy yes, way to say, honey. hey, Tim, you're right. Y- well, sort yes, of. Honey, this is Brady. You're right. You're the best. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Hold on. Hold your horses, Tim. It's not really like that. It actually is. All right. Now that now we've. <laughs> that what I said. You're always trying to I hold a man down. Supplementary. Oh my God! I am the man. It's, That's it's right. because hold, of the long the hair, down. is it not? Mm-hmm. You see, folks. Because, uh, Braden does. You look. You know what you look like. You look like a white dude's for Kamala. That's what you look like with that hair. That's what you look like. I was on the call. It was. I said it. Yeah. I said it. It was. Were you there? Was Rudy there? I heard Rudy was Rudy. there. God, we are going off on the page. <laughs> I just want to let you guys know that uh, Braden does not think men should have long hair. So if you're watching have long hair, Braden doesn't like you. Okay, let's keep going. No, that's not true. I'm just genetically no, disposed. Not this. Oh, you take it. You, you just misdundered me. Whatever that means. What? Mis- misunderstood what? me because what? of my long hair. You thought I was anti-gun or something. I don't know what you're doing over there. Okay, wait, I'm going to go number four because you're off the track right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I don't even know where you are right now. You're not even, you're beyond the rumble strip. You're in the woods. I, you're like hitting trees I'm, as you're going yeah, down. I, I, yeah, right off the green into the water and ball yeah, not recovered. Yeah, anyway. Keep moving. Mm-hmm. Braden's anti-gun. Anyway. I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to. It's really hard on these streets. So here's the part that I really love about that. And I want to hit something that you just hit on as well. Remanded down for um, a rehearing in 2022. Mm-hmm. That's a big freaking deal. Yeah. You know what that is? That's the Supreme Court. That's the other cases that were sitting there. Yep. That's the Supreme Court that were, excuse me, the cases that were sitting there. And then everyone was saying they'll never move anywhere. They'll never go anywhere. SCOTUS comes out with Bruin. They all go back down to their courts, just like AR 15 bans went back to California, just like they went back to New Jersey. They go back to Maryland, go back to Illinois. They're all going back and being remanded back down to the courts from whence they came. And now you're getting the corrective action that's that's a big freaking deal like we are winning this we will win this yeah and this is one of the major reasons why you know biden and what's her face are uh desperately trying to uh, change the makeup of the supreme court biden just recently introduced his ideas somebody's ideas he's just the mouthpiece and not a very good one at that bro don't Uh, talk (laughs) 
I'm not going to talk about the other mouthpiece and what she's good for in politics. Anyway, um, we're talking about Biden. She loves Venn diagrams. Yeah. <laughs> Venn diagrams is what I was referencing. Uh, yeah, but he's, you know, put this put forth this proposal, you know, 18 year uh, limits to the term of Supreme Court justices. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they probably want to expand the court. I don't know if he actually talked about that, but they have in the past. Uh, you know, they basically want to change the He make, did not in this didn't one. In this one? In this one, he That did was not. in the previous, you know. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm sure yeah. it's, that they probably think that's a bridge too far, uh, you know. So, um, yeah. So this is this is old Biden trying to control the, the SCOTUS because of decisions like this. They don't like this, folks. When, when they don't get a decision right. they want, the court's unbalanced. If, you know, they had a one judge, conser- one conservative judge advantage in the Supreme Court, just one, they would say the court's unbalanced. It's only unbalanced. imbalanced when the mm-hmm. Marxists the have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one or more seat control. That's exactly Then right. it's in balance, right? So if we get the decisions exactly we want, right. it's in balance. If we get the decisions we don't want, it's imbalanced, and we got to take drastic measures to basically restructure the entire Constitution up to and including a constitutional amendment, which was proposed by by Biden. All right, so. Mm-hmm. No, no, I, I love that. It's very accurate. In fact, I would like to just say something really quickly. And this, don't about that constitutional don't, amendment. Don't, I, don't. I'm, I'm, you're good. Okay. Your hair's fine. Your hair's fine. It's very luscious today. Um, the thing that really bothers me about that, Biden, the Democrats, the left, Kamala Harris, all of them, they know that it does not have a snowball's chance in hell of doing anything. In order to change what he proposed, you have to have a constitutional amendment. And it's the exact same as if they were to repeal the Second Amendment. You have to have a constitutional amendment. You do not have the states necessary. You do not have the population necessary. You do not have the votes in Congress necessary. Or the state it is, support. Oh, yeah. Or the state support. Yeah, yeah thank you. That's the, that's the last piece. It is such a far reach. But yet they do it anyway with all this pomp and circumstance, telling their gun-controlling leftists who don't like the Supreme Court out of balance, the emotional reactors, that this is going to happen. We put forth bold proposals. It has a zero. See that? Zero percent chance and it and they just go about like well if you elect us we'll really get them yeah it's just no you won't yeah. you're lying it, it's it's for political gain right so they'll make these wild proposals to their base their radical base and then they'll say when it fails which it inevitably will do as you point out then they're going to say look what the republicans did we wanted to save democracy yep. and they destroyed democracy by not allowing us to basically restructure the entire constitution and our entire republic because we're not winning and we can't have that right those Filthy Republicans. That's all this is. It's it's Those filthy. Yeah, it's political. It, it's totally. But anyway, gaming. Yes. I like how we're we're, we're like we're like swerving, but we're always going to come back to true north because here we go again. Check this out. It's number four. This is back on the AR fifteen, <laughs> not on Kamala Harris or your hair or the SCOTUS. Dude, um, don't get on Kamala. That's that's not funny. Oh, I. Wow. Wow. That wow. you said it, I'm not me go crazy on that one. I did. I did. I did. It's my fault. I own it. I own it. Let's continue. <clears throat> this is number four. This is what the judge said. And the thing that we're talking about, New Jersey's prohibition on AR-15s is similar in nature to the handgun ban that was at issue in 2008's Heller decision. And it didn't have the kind of historical analog required for it to pass muster under Bruin in one sentence. He just tied why AR-15 bans will eventually be completely struck down. Heller and Bruin. Mm-hmm. It is a thing of beauty. Yeah. And this, and when he actually, no, go ahead. Saying, this is what has the, the left so up in arms right now. Um, yep. they, they cannot stand the fact that their, their entire initiative that they've been pushing for decades of disarmament just got shredded mm-hmm. by the courts. Oh, smoke. And, and this is going to infuriate them because it sets them back. Now all they literally have is trying to get things done in the state, which the Supreme Court now is undoing like this. Yep. And then all they, the only other thing they can do is create these stupid little offices of gun violence prevention and staff them with a bunch of people they pay a bunch of money to that gets nothing done, which, you know, I'm, I'm fine with nothing. But um, it's still a huge <laughs> waste of money, and it's just them out there you know, saying, hey, look at me trying to get, you know, political power. But what what's epic about this is they're they're 
they have when Biden got elected, they made this rush to try to get everything they could done as quickly yes, as they could. They did. And they've slammed doors. We've been talking about this, folks. They have slammed doors in their own faces this entire time. They know the Supreme Court is doesn't favor their agenda, yet they keep putting forth these proposals and these laws and they keep getting them struck down under a court that they're trying mm -hmm. to evolve. I mean, this is the very definition of stupidity. This is the, the court they're trying yes. to change. They know won't give them the decisions they want because they're wildly unconstitutional. They're actively trying to change the makeup of the court and the structure of the court. Meanwhile, they're running all these cases to the court they know is going to you know, strike them down. The very yeah. definition of they're idiocy. Heading off a cliff. And this is this they're, is the, they're heading off a cliff. The, the American left. They're like that's, literally that's painting themselves 100%. into a corner. Yes, they are. And, and <clears> the other beautiful part about this is another reason they despise SCOTUS is SCOTUS also shuts down, shut down all their executive overreach as yep, well. Chevron's through gone. The ATF, through the yep. DOJ, Chevron's gone. And that's why you're seeing things so like anything going forward. Nope. Yeah. It's like you're seeing things like bump stocks. Well, that was done under Chevron. ATF still hasn't appealed mm -hmm. that one. FRT triggers. Ghost guns. Right? FRT triggers. All that hoopla about all the FRT triggers. Eh, yep. Chevron. Um, it, it, so all these things they've been trying to do. Frames and receivers. Frames and receivers, yeah. All the stuff that they've been trying to do the last four years and all the arrests they've made, all the crazy stuff they've done, putting CRS firearms in prison for having a, a piece of metal that had a drawing a on it and claiming it was a machine right. gun they couldn't even get to work by their own admission. This is the craziness that they have tried to do in the United States and the infringements on our rights they've tried to accomplish. And right. it's just absolute insanity. And watching them do this, I don't know what they're doing, dude. I mean, is there any rhyme or reason to it? Is it just like they're they're just? I think I honestly, I, what I think they've reached. I think you have seen a maturity stage of an entire gun control apparatus and in an industry that has been built. Because I've said this a few times as well. Um, my observation of what's happening is you've got four or five main players in the gun control space, which just so happens to mirror economic theories on businesses in same in the same tech space area. Um, so when you get to the carrying capacity, these are all economic principles, but when you get to the carrying capacity in a certain industry, they start to set like set in place and they start to become permanent and fixtures and they start to mature. And I think what you're seeing now is the five gun control groups, every time for gun safety, Giffords.org, Brady United, March for Our Lives and Moms Man Action. Those five are now the main line and there won't be any more coming up to, to jump into the fray because that'd be too many. So you're seeing them go into a maturity stage where they've been trying to do this and they're going to basically get, they're going to get smoked on this. And then eventually they will start just normalizing into a space of, well, we're going to keep fundraising for the Democrat because we like common sense gun safety. And then they won't have anything else because they, they jumped the shark. That's exactly where you're going to end up. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're busy jumping sharks over there. Fonzie would be proud. They are jumping sharks. Yeah. Fonzie would be. Well, listen to this part of the same. This is still number four. You'll love this. This is the quote from the actual uh, brief. Under Heller, while the Supreme Court stated the Second Amendment right is not unlimited, the Supreme Court forbade a complete prohibition on a class of gun ownership, holding the absolute prohibition of an entire class of arms that is widely utilized for the lawful purpose of self-defense is impermissible. Guided by this decision, and for the reasons below, the AR-15 provision of the Assault Firearms Law, which prohibits the use of the Colt AR-15 for the use of self-defense within the home, does not pass constitutional muster when applying the Bruin standard. So, I mean, this guy really did a good job in writing this. Yeah, I mean, he he, he did. He, he tried to be impartial, but you definitely can tell where he sides politically. A little bit, yeah. But I, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, he's basically following the instructions given to him like the court system is supposed to do, right? Like, whoop, yeah. I made a mistake. Daddy corrected me, and now here's my amended, you know, position yeah. on all this. Yeah, so I would agree. And there's there's one more piece that I really want to get in front of you because I think this part is a very these last two are very important. Um, I don't need to show you the FPC announcement; that's not important. But let me read five and six here because this kind of culminates what the left has been doing through these state level pushes that you've been talking about. This is number five. He rejected the state's argument that AR-15s could be banned because they aren't commonly used in reports of self-defense shootings. He said the guns just had to be in common use for lawful purposes, not meet a specific threshold for the number of times that they are used in self-defense shootings. Quote, understanding our nation's historical tradition, that's Bruin, by the way, as one where the right to keep and bear arms was integrally linked with the founding era fear of disarmament faced by the American colonists in the face of governmental oppression. The right to keep and bear arms seems to be inherently connected with an understanding of the lawful purposes of keeping those same arms. Literally 
smokes the idea that they were trying to manipulate. And number six here, this is a key point to this. Plaintiffs need not show the AR-15s are the most popular weapon for defensive gun use and circulation in order to show they are commonly used for lawful purpose. They need only show that it's commonly used for lawful purpose, the judge boom. So, Wow, I mean, boom. this is crazy because this is well-written, as you said. It's like he totally understands <laughs> what he's writing about yes. here. He may not understand the AR-15 or how magazines work, but he, he definitely understands the constitutional side of this. Because this is this uh -huh. is well worded. What's weird to me is that this guy would originally side against the AR-15 understanding all of mm -hmm. this. Is this something that he just recently came to? Right. Did he have a dream and he woke up and realized he had made a horrible <laughs> mistake? Or did he understand this the entire <laughs> time, no but he allowed politics to intervene in his previous decision? I don't know. Bro, I, I, I could not tell you that. But what I can tell you is the idea that he puts this in his actual decision and brief of saying... No, New Jersey, you can't yeah. parse words and you can't just pick and choose. You can't say, well, it may be the most commonly used and owned firearm, but is it commonly used in self-defense? Right. I like th this little splitting hairs BS that they do just got called on the carpet. That's it. That's what I love about it. It's yeah. like, no, nope, that didn't hold water. Yep. No, that's that's really interesting. And, and that's great wording you know, for, for precedent sake. Right. So when we have to deal with this again mm -hmm. in the future, which inevitably we will, uh, you know, this, this actually sets that precedent. So when a, a judge in the future is deciding a case, they go back and look at this and they go, mm, okay, well, we kind of have to follow this, this, uh, this line of thinking here. That's how our court system works right, right or wrong. And in this case, it benefits us. So exactly yeah, right. It's a uh, really, really interesting. So we'll follow this. And, and as Braden said, folks, this will definitely have an impact on other states that also have bans on various types of firearms, citing specifically the last couple of things we just talked about in this video. Right? It basically right there says this hair splitting you're doing, the Braden was talking about, doesn't meet constitutional muster. Therefore, we're undoing all these previous decisions. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. As that as it does play out and as things change, we'll bring you additional videos. Thank you for watching Second Legacy. We'll talk to you guys soon.